Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be covering a topic which is associated with land and land possession. Now this is a, a pretty, uh, what you might consider a hot topic today, the idea of land possession. Uh, especially when it comes to high rental uh, prices, cost prices, and so-called property taxes. In this video, I'm going to explain just how that works and how all of this revolves around essentially the code word heritage. So first, we need to have an idea of what a revolving fund is. Essentially, it's a, a resource, a reservoir of funds in which, as far as this property context goes, uh, property tax, as well as other vehicles, but in this example, we'll look at the property tax. Property tax is extracted from a municipal corporation by a municipal corporation. And then that municipal corporation will pay contractors, it will pay uh, large corporations, it will uh, donate money to nonprofits. Now, all of that money will go into a revolving fund under the code word heritage. Now, when it goes into that revolving fund of code word heritage, it can then be extracted and pulled out and used to buy more property. Now, the implications for this. Uh, have to do with what is considered market manipulation or cornering the market. And it's a, a different concept when you think about somebody who has cornered the land market, essentially owning all the land. So this happens by essentially through this mechanism, you take these large corporations that have acquired all this land using this revolving fund under heritage extracted from so-called property taxes and other other mechanisms including of course rent and other things like that so basically across all their land they jack up the rent price now this arbitrarily increases the market value of the land see if they incre increase their rent price to a certain extent let's say you have one month that it's six hundred dollars and then the next month they increase it to twelve hundred well that revenue that you get from that increases the property value arbitrarily, which thus increases the property tax. You've doubled it. Now this will lead to a higher, like I said, a higher property tax. It will of course lead to more funding for this revolving fund, which will in turn lead to more purchasing of property, which will lead to higher rent prices and higher um, sale prices on property, which of course will raise the market value even more, raise more taxes, so on and so forth. It is a continuous scheme. Now, the components involved in this, of course, are the so-called regulators themselves, the municipal corporations, the state corporations, we call the government. All of these entities are go run hand in hand with the nonprofits and the great giant organizations, and they also all receive funding from this revolving fund. The so-called state governments, the so-called uh, local municipal governments, they extract from this reservoir fund as well as do all these other corporations, and they gobble up all the land doing it, pushing out any sort of uh, the closest thing you could get to independent ownership. And the main entities that operate these things are investment, investment funds. This would be called an investment vehicle. And the important, the most important fact about this is that they are not affected by the system because they don't pay property taxes. The municipal corporations do not pay property taxes and they wouldn't pay themselves anyway because that would make no sense. Uh, they don't, the uh, state corporations don't pay property taxes. None of these entities pay property taxes. And of course, nonprofits don't pay property taxes. And even these large corporations, they all have cost write-offs, you know. So if them, the simple fact of them laundering this money through their system means they get to put all those in tax write-offs. 
as cost of doing business and other things like that. So one hand washes the other, basically. So voting will do nothing. All of these entities, they're all self-sustaining. Well, not self-sustaining. They're all sustained off of the backs of, of theft of everyone else. But the idea of voting them out is uh, is ridiculous. It's, it's not going to do anything. The reason why they want you to focus so much on the voting angle is so essentially they can keep doing this stuff and you're going to waste your time. Just like the runaround where somebody sends, says, oh, go talk to this person over here. And then you go talk to that person and they send you to talk to someone else. They're wasting your time on purpose. That's what voting is. It's a time waster. Now, using a gun could be more effective. The actual leveraging of physical, tangible force against individuals can get things done to an extent. But a financial attack is better. And in that, the spirit of the idea of a financial attack against this clearly inimical occupational force, financial force mechanism to steal the land and everything else, we're going to go ahead and look at a document which is the link is essentially what the code word heritage has to do with the revolving fund. So it's a code word. And when you see that word on property everywhere, it's sort of like a stamp of ownership, like a branding, brand name or branding on a cattle. So you'll see the properties with these code words on them. But the most important thing to notice about it is not the pattern just that the properties all have and the entities all have, but the fact that these are code words that relate to a revolving fund. And when you know the code word and you know that he's in code word, then you can find that revolving fund. Now, in this context of which there, there's, of course, many revolving funds, with Heritage specifically, there is a revolving fund that you can find on something called Form ADV. It's a investment vehicle filing form with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And of course, the Securities and Exchange Commission is equally involved with, with everyone else in these schemes. And so it is a little bit shocking that this um, information is publicly available, but it basically is all you have to do is search uh, code word form ADV PDF. And if it's there, it should pop up on number one. So I put in form ADV PDF heritage and it popped up immediately. And so this is the investment vehicle that is behind this land grab. It is essentially the equilibrium of the heritage associated um, investment vehicle, so-called, but either way, uh, it's a land occupational force to steal the land from everyone else. And uh, working, of course, in coalition with the so-called regulators and the people who raise, who set property taxes to, of course, essentially make it so that you fund your own destruction. Whenever you pay property taxes, you are effectively funding your own destruction. And so ultimately you'll own nothing and you won't be able to afford the rent because it's so high. That is the world that paying property taxes is funneling. Of course, you can't blame the people paying property taxes for the fact that they're extorted under threat of, of death and arms and stuff. And instead, it would be much more applicable to target these enemy systems, these enemy occupiers. So in, uh, in some, with some of the examples of, of heritage, while I was in living in Columbus, Ohio, there was uh, I lived at Heritage Apartments, the Heritage Apartment Complex up in Columbus. Of course, many have heard about the Heritage Foundation and Project 2025. And so uh, before we get into this completely, I'll uh, share a story, tell you a story about uh, how the bait and switch system works and how they leverage you to work against your own interests. So the Heritage Project 2025 thing to try and inculcate that into the Trump crowd, that is the same tactic of back the blue. 
So basically, the anti-deep state, um, freedom-loving Trump supporters, the ones in, in mixed into the crowd who worked with these secret societies and their coordinated operations, started driving the back the blue narrative to essentially get the Trump supporters to turn around and actually support the deep state, support the United Nations, and support the land grabs, the ATF, the FBI, all of these different organizations that uh, apparently we're all supposed to be against. Now, it goes further than this. While I was working in Columbus, the State House in Ohio, the Ohio State House, I volunteered on the Trump campaign. And we got all these volunteers together, all these people that were going to go out and do all the door-to-door -door grassroots stuff for the Trump campaign. And lo and behold, they did a bait and switch and then leveraged all of those volunteer workers coming out of their own volition and unpaid with no reimbursement, nothing, just like they were meaningless. And they, they made them go out and, well, it, you know, anybody could have left. But either way, they, we went out and... Um, we weren't, it wasn't campaigning for the Trump campaign. It was campaigning for like Stephanie Coons and other people that most hadn't ever heard of who, uh, in my mind, are completely despicable. But it's a bait and switch. There wasn't actually any Trump campaigning going on. They took the Trump campaign umbrella and then leveraged it to do, to support their work, to support people that most wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't care about. Just, they're, they're just stuffed shirts. They're, they're, public theater faces, right? They're not going to do anything. Most of those people went out for there for Trump, and they, of course, got... Um, they didn't like having that done, and so the next time, there were no volunteers. And, of course, naturally, they play this tactic over and over and over again because they have absolutely no respect for anyone, and uh, they, they constantly leverage that. And that's what Project 2025 is. Project 2025 is all about getting Donald Trump supporters, specifically, to work for the land occupation, the land grab, the high property taxes, the high rent costs, and the expensive uh, housing purchases, all based out of the same entity under this heritage umbrella, uh, all of these different investment vehicles. Of course, there's another one called RISE, but I won't cover that in this video. I'll do a, a different video talking about that one. So, in, so as far as... Uh, Groups, we have the Heritage, um, Her Fairfield Heritage Association, and this is here in Lancaster. And then we have Heritage Ohio. Now that's an allegedly governmental program. So that's what I was saying before, is that these people take from the reservoir as well. The people that charge property taxes take from this reservoir that is, is generated by it, and that's how you, how you get Heritage Ohio. So you have Heritage Skills USA, and Heritage Skills USA had a program where they were going to teach you homeschooling, where it was run by a so-called educator. So they always do this little tactic of, of, of the word game, and essentially people usually go to homeschooling because they don't want general, I would say generally, they don't, it's because they don't want to put their kids in school for one reason or another, any school, right? Uh, if we had different types of schools, maybe then they would, but either way, they're choosing to do homeschooling to take them out of the brainwashing. And then you have all these so-called homeschooling movements, all designed to reimpose that brainwashing and all run by so-called educators. So it's basically school by another name. It's the same structure. They just change the name and play these games all the time. But it's the content that matters, and it is what is being done, right? In homeschooling, the idea is that the parents teach the children, not someone else. In the school system, it's somebody else teaches your children and you essentially put your child up as property of the state, of the Board of Education, of whatever whatever it is. They treat your child like equity. Whenever it comes to the custody of child, according to them, according to legal definitions, the rules of equity shall prevail. That's what their legal definition says. And so that's what you understand when you have something like Heritage Skills USA, which is, has a a homeschooling banner where it's run by so-called educator. And I think we all know what that means. Next, of course, we have the Heritage Bank Center. So that's a bank, right? Uh, you naturally have the Heritage Foundation and then you have the Heritage Group. 
So this doesn't all have to do with land, but there is a big implication when it comes to land. Now, founded in 1930, the Heritage Group is a fourth generation family owned business managing a diverse portfolio of more than 50 companies specializing in construction materials, environmental services, and specialty chemicals. And of course, naturally, they're like, like it says, they're involved in construction. So the Heritage Revolving Fund relates to all the construction going on. And it also relates to all of the shipping facilities, all the factories, and all the massive housing complexes. Well, maybe not all, but most that we see. Uh, and then I, I'll uh, I'll move on because I think that's a, that's enough examples anyway. To form ADV, which is the Uniform Application for Investment Advisor Registration Report by Exam Reporting Advisors, and I'll avoid doing the usual slide thing because this stuff is um, particularly um, tedious. To dig through it's just a bunch of numbers and things on paper but the information contained in it is very important for instance the numerical keys on these documents can give somebody the ability to go in and zero out these accounts causing major damage of course even if you did that they have other revolving accounts they would pivot they would change things and stuff like that they have to be completely removed destroyed eradicated gone absolutely but uh, this is a step towards uh, crippling their operations to an extent that it will uh, bring a, a breathing room to others. So this is called the Heritage Advisors Group Incorporated. It's the legal name, so-called, of the uh, entity that is filing this document. And it is listed out of 166 Lookout Place, Maitland, Florida, United States, blah, blah, blah. So here's something I noticed in a, in a pattern, is that most of the creepy, weird people, uh, corrupt, co corrupt, connected, secret society, you know, those types of people that I knew growing up in Ohio, they always had a strong relationship with two main places, North Carolina and Florida. And I know a family specifically who are Jesuit and who uh, have, some, as I know, I'm aware, relations with uh, operations in China and things like that, you know, the CIA kind of stuff, and naturally they live in Florida now. So that's, uh, that, that's a, a theme there, and it makes a lot of sense that a large revolving fund like this would be out of Florida. Now, under the filing of, under the filing for clients, it states that there are 105 individuals and 29 so-called high net worth individuals. And then we also have uh, pensions and profit sharing plans, charitable organizations, and corporations. And those are what's listed. Now, under the amount of regulatory assets under management, the first two categories are 31 and 37 million um, respectively with a, you know, 406,063 and 469,710. Also, we have 892,516, 400,221, 96,200. Now, that seems a little bit low as far as uh, what heritage is all behind, but there's more. Under regulatory assets under management, and not to mention you have to trust that they're filling these things out honestly, which I guarantee they're not because they are protected by the regulators for whom they're filing this paperwork anyway. This paperwork is designed to provide a vehicle, an instrument, so that their people in their organization know where to go to get funds from to inflict their operations on the rest of us. U.S. dollar amount and discretionary is 66864710 Non-discretionary is 3,400,000. Total, 70,264,710. Um, and that is between 251 accounts, 31 accounts, with a total of 282 accounts. Um, what types of advisory services. They've got financial planning, portfolio management, 
and publication of periodicals or newsletters. And they provide financial planning services to 101 to 250 clients. So I think you understand the weird discrepancies in the numbers here. But one important thing to note is that they want you to think of financial planners and financial advisors as um, per particularly pedestrian, a, a inconsequential position. But that is a double speak. That is, they're essentially like the counselors in Game of Thrones. They're far from being counselors. They counsel people as in do what we say or else. That's how their counseling goes. So they're not some sideline position who take what they say or don't, to do whatever you want kind of thing. They're not like that at all. They operate under the cover of uh, word games, bait and switch, and other little surface tactics and tricks. But these revolving funds, they are the core of their operations. And if this is about, as far as I can tell, the closest thing you can get to a financial equilibrium that can effectively be targeted. Now, under asset type and uh, the percentages there, it lists that 78% is securities issued by registered investment companies or business development companies. And then you have cash and cash equivalents at 5%, and then non-exchange traded equity securities at 11%. So, like I said before, investment vehicles in real estate. Real estate relating to the land, of course. So custodians for separately managed accounts. So these are the individuals who essentially operate this revolving fund. We have the Charles Schwab and Company Incorporated out of Westlake, Texas. And this is a naturally laundering organization. So the revolving fund is centered in Florida. So the minions that want to extract this stuff, they have to go to Florida, likely, and actually extract this stuff. But then it's, it's managed from other places as sort of... Um, tectonic warfare idea of keeping everything separate, distant, different places, making it hard to track down. And the amount of regulatory assets under this custodian of Charles Schwab and Company is $70,250,000. And uh, the financial industry affiliations, we have accountant or accounting firm, insurance company or agency. Next, we have Heritage Financial Services, LLC. And, well, that, um, it's accountant or accounting firm is what it's listed as, and but it doesn't have a, a uh, address for that one. Then we have Financial Centers of America. And I, I won't read through all the different um, checkmark boxes, the yes and no questions, all that different stuff. Uh, here we've got a custody of 46,792,212 and that's shared be between 98 clients. So I'm sure you can do the percentage math on that uh, pretty easily with any calculator. And so keep scrolling and now we get to the individuals that operate this stuff. We have Anthony Joseph Rossetti and John Bruce Kelly, who is equally the owner and owner from 2020. So there appears that this was set up in 2020. And also the chief compliance honor officer is John Kelly, John Bruce Kelly. And then there's the uh, different coded numbers and stuff. So like I was saying before in one of my other videos, uh, a lot of stuff is controlled through numerical keys. If you have a master key, then you can void out other keys, like someone's social security number. But also you have numerical keys that relate to revolving funds. That's what these are. Now, in order to uh, correctly authenticate a pull request, you need to have various authentication keys. You need to have the identity of the individual doing it authenticated as a, in a position to be able to do the pull request. You need, the, of course, the uh, numerical key for the location that's being pulled from. 
you need the numerical key for who operates it, etc. You know, it, it's all comes down to numbers and figures. Uh, it doesn't matter so much the specific individual doing it, it's just the number numerical key. And uh, this is out of Florida, of course. And blah, blah, blah. These are very long documents. Uh, as far as this is uh, brochures, you've got um, the only other name that's new on here is Thomas Rayburn. And then this is signed John Kelly, Chief Compliance Officer, blah, blah, blah. So while we're talking on the subject of, of properties, let's just go ahead and look at the RISE document. Now, RISE is very important, especially for Ohio. In Lancaster, you have Rising Park. But more importantly, you have a company called RISE Realty. And they own pretty much all the property throughout Ohio that would, of course, be owned by this Heritage Group. Now, the Heritage Group is mostly concerned with buying up industrial things and like that. The RISE res res uh, Revolving Fund Reservoir it's concerned with what we would call residential property and is also a old revolving fund that relates to many other uh, acquisitions done on behalf of, in most cases, foreign interests, but either way inimical to the U.S. Constitution, the people live here, everything else. They have obviously would, they would argue that, but uh, who really cares, right? You know, these people are causing really bad damage to everyone, they are effectively enemies of humanity and certainly enemies of America. So this document is under Rise Capital LLC. And like I said before, I find these simply by going and putting in form ADV, PDF, a code word, right? So the, the physical address for this our principal place of business is out of 500 West Putnam Avenue, Greenwich, Connecticut. And usually when I do research into these documents and organizations, I find they always relate somehow to an area in Europe, usually Switzerland, sometimes Germany or Belgium. But either way, it's always this sort of globalist structure that likely just wraps, wraps around the world and stuff, but seems mostly to be operationally centered in Europe. And then we've got a list of their social media accounts and things, and it's it's out of Connecticut. Um, it states it's a actively engaged in commodity pool operator or commodity trade advisor. And, you know, like I said, most of this stuff doesn't really matter that much because they, they're not, they're, you can't, they're lying, right? You know, you, they're liars. You can't trust them to be honest on the paperwork. They're filing to the regulators who are equally liars. And they're all one hand washes the other. But the point of this is, like I said before, to know where the revolving fund is, that it exists, and that it's associated with these specific numerical keys, and that this is where they go to get their funding, and that the funds that go into this are extracted from, essentially, through force and fraud from everyone. And then, of course, leveraged against. So we got Rise Capital Liquid Token Fund LP which unsurprisingly is out of Delaware. And the name of the partners and managers is Rise Capital LLC. So here you see this revolving thing of where you've got this entity that is a partner or controlling interest in, this, in the same entity that, you know, it's, it's a revolving door. Then you have Jacob Joseph Turner and Brian Michael Robbins. And these people, they might be evil and villainous and all that stuff, but most of them are just financial managers and uh, and they, they likely won't turn against their, their overlords out of fear of their overlords. And they're simply just assigned to manage this revolving fund, like, kind of like the idea of like a CIA safe housekeeper type person. So the gross amount for this private fund is 1672301 allegedly. And additional auditor information says Michael Colinesi out of Bloomingdale, Illinois. And then we have Coinbase Securities out of New York. So here's another layer. Let's say you own you you 
use Coinbase services, you have the app, you so-called purchase crypto, which isn't really a purchase, but yeah, you, you exchange into crypto for a fee. And all of that stuff that you have in those bank accounts is then leveraged into this system for them to acquire properties, which they then in arbitrarily increase the va property value by charging way over what you would say anyone would pay for it lifting the market value of it arbitrarily. They'd overcharge our rent, and then they would use all of that, the funds of, of doing that, which affects everyone else across the board as far as property tax goes to buy more and increase it, right? So if you work with Coinbase at all, then you are essentially still funding the same scheme by another means, another way. So let's say everybody stops paying property taxes well, that won't inherently stop the system at all. Not to mention, you might have an area that stops paying property taxes, but they continue using uh, services that can be then leveraged against them uh, and basically make them rule the day they stop paying property taxes and things like that. Next, we have the NAV Fund Administration Group, Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Like I said, one of the most effective things to do to really damage their operations is to target these revolving funds. And then we've got direct owners of Jacob Turner, Jacob Joseph Turner, and Brian Michael Robbins. Does, it does not list uh, the, the um, RISE Capital or any RISE entity anyway as being of controlling interest, so that's interesting. And uh, that's the end of the RISE document. That's uh, not very long, but it certainly relates to a lot that's going on as far as property goes. Now there's more, naturally, um, but I won't really get into those right now. And I feel that, I believe that this format is far better, uh, less straining than going through a slideshow of looking at these uh, tedious documents. So the next thing is to explain, one, why they don't pay property taxes and how they leverage the original way of doing things that was designed for us, against us. But first, we should look at this idea of what essentially all of us are forced into in some way as far as real estate goes, either renting or ownership, which is renting by another name. So what happens is that anytime someone buys a piece of property using US dollars or any other sort of global currency, you are purchasing property with encumbrance and adding on to that encumbrance as well. This is a tenant or a tenement a ten tentative hold, right? Or lieu tenant in lieu of the holder. So you're a tenant on the real estate. Now there's a couple ways that they imposed encumbrances in the United States and the territorial United States, whatever. And in many cases around the world, a lot of the, as far as I'm aware, of course, considering the fact that they control uh, information itself, then you can't trust anything at all. But they would say that these encumbrances have been on around forever. But as far as the United States goes, the encumbrances on our property started in 1863 with the passing of the 1863 Stamp Act by a collect revenue collector. And they reimposed all of the debts that had been voided since the founding of the Constitutional Republic in 1775. Now they didn't, they went beyond this too, because they established inheritance, inheritance taxes of tax judgment in say like the Ohio General Code, but across the entire country, and it relates entirely to land. And the reason why it's important to focus on the land is because in the U.S. Constitution under Article 4, it states that the U.S. Constitutions and all laws made in pursuance thereof shall be the supreme law of the land. And so when they put this inheritance tax on it, what they say is that when the person dies, and if those taxes that they didn't know are being imposed on their property are not paid, 
then a for act or proactive judgment is placed against the property until those taxes are paid off and essentially that's a catch-22 if you pay those property taxes then you're accepting the fraudulent encumbrance if you don't pay the taxes then they will have a pretext an excuse to impose an encumbrance that they had no authority to do so in the first place but it's based off of all of the things that were voided and thrown out from the war of 1775 being reinstituted reemplaced in 1863 so that's how the encumbrance goes now there's an extra added angle to it that has to do with the removal from the gold from from metals from metals right to in, in our our currency is not metal based and that's because there's a line in the US constitution that says all debts shall be paid in gold and silver so the only way to discharge a debt as far as the US constitution goes the supreme law of land is to pay in gold and silver so we can't in in this system pay for real estate property in gold and silver. Essentially, the only way to purchase without encumbrance is to purchase, do a private party purchase with somebody in gold and silver. Constitutional. Now, they know this. So they don't pay property taxes on what they have because they hold it freely of encumbrance, which is called a free hold. They hold it free of encumbrance. Freely hold it. They purchase it without encumbrance by using gold and silver, usually done through investment mechanisms, right? So they purchase a certain quantity of gold and silver, and then they trade that gold and silver on paper for uh, real estate. And thus they have essentially discharged the debt by paying in gold and silver, and thus they hold it free of encumbrance. If you don't pay for anything in gold or silver, then you continue to add encumbrances. As far as the Constitution goes, it has to be in gold or silver in order to discharge the encumbrance. It does not, however, specify quantity. Yes, you could discharge a multi-billion dollar debt with an ounce of silver. It does not specify quantity. Of course, they leverage this stuff against us on, in, on their behalf. So let's uh, let's do a, a scenario of where you effectively purchase property, real estate, without encumbrance. Now, doing that alone is difficult, especially because they're enemy occupying forces and they don't want you doing that. But let's say you succeed in doing it. What would that look like? Well, you start with, of course, Article four in the Constitution. It's the supreme law of land. So you establish that baseline. And then you make a private party purchase off of, let's say, an ounce of silver for 50 acres of land. You have legal documentation, meaning, of course, documentation, legal, reduced to writing. Law reduced to writing is legal. So you write out documentation, uh, evidence, evidence of that private sale with the ounce of silver. And, of course, you show on it that that's discharging of debt according to such and such section of the U.S. Constitution, the Supreme Law of Land, blah, blah, blah. Now, then you will have somebody show up at your door, possibly, or a letter or something, saying you have to pay property taxes. Then you respond by stating to them, you have no claim because this property was purchased in silver as according to the Constitution, blah, 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 Dis discharge has been made of debt, this property is owned free of encumbrance, so on and so forth. When they get that letter, you have to put teeth to it as well, saying because they pretty much never recognize this stuff. They don't care, especially the minions who are just there to quote unquote do their job, which is to be enemy thugs. So they, they'll laugh at that naturally, and then they'll come back. And so then you respond with, in the U.S. code, if you deprive... Uh, of constitutional rights under the color of law, then blah, blah, blah. And if it involves kidnapping, attempt to murder, blah, 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 stuff like that, even though it's corporate code and it's not legitimate, uh, you can still use it against them. And you say basically in there, it says you may be sentenced to death. That most of the time will get rid of the low level minions because once you put it into the realm of life and death, they scurry away, they get afraid, so on and so forth, because essentially they're cowards. Someone stands up to them and threatens force against them there it negates their force they're bringing because their force is all based off of a facade and appearance 
It's not based of tangible, practical ability to kill, to enforce, to make someone else do something else. It's based off of fear and mind control and essentially bully tactics. So it usually gets rid of the uh, minions, the lower level minions. It's not going to stop it though. When you establish yourself free of, of the, the minions coming to your door and threatening you with guns and stuff like that, once you establish yourself free of that, then they will impose other tactics. They will siege your property free of encumbrance by putting up construction around it and making it so you can't leave your property. By cutting off all of the uh, corporate, um, the corporate public works like water, electricity, all that stuff, all of their, uh, all of those leashed mechanisms, saying stuff like, "Okay, so you own the property outright, free of encumbrance." Well. We, we can't give you these services anymore because we don't have any claim or reason to be on your land, which technically speaking is true. Of course, it doesn't matter whether or not you pay those bills or you pay them for those services, and it doesn't matter the fact that they're the only ones that provide those services and they have a monopoly on it because they're just going to treat you like they see you, which is an enemy. That's because they are enemies and they only see us as uh, as the recalcitrant population that they're occupying. It's just like whenever any mercenary force or enemy occupation is imposed, except in this case it was done through fraud and over time methodically, and waiting for a certain generation to die so that they can impose this new crap on the next generation who are uh, in some ways ignorant. So they, they, that's how they act, right? They, you've got the wars of religion in Europe where you have occupation forces come in and steal everything from everyone, and then you have another one come in and, and kills everyone because they allowed their stuff to be stolen by the other enemy force and so on and so forth. So that's basically what's going on here. They, they do not see, none of the minions and none of the people that control the system see that. And sure, you could look at it and say, well, it's the city council doing it to me. And in some ways it is, but they're taking orders from someone else and they are in turn leashed to this revolving fund. All they care about are those dollar signs. So this gets into the idea of the religion of the dollar and cost equals value, but it's in encumbered currency. Most people, when you try to talk to them about real value, real wealth, and real currency, such as in gold and silver, and the fact that that's the only way to discharge debt, they're still going to keep chasing after the, the employee employee position, the job, the investment vehicle, the funding, right? But what they're focused on specifically is this encumbered currency. And it's because it's ingrained into essentially a ritualized religious structure, religious order of only recognizing the official currency. You recognize nothing else. And so people stockpile silver and gold and things like that. And most others will look at them as they're crazy because they only recognize the religion of the dollar. And it's not just the dollar. It's so-called the dollar used to be the taller, which was, in fact, silver. It was essentially the equivalent of pound sterling. You know, they're the same thing in some way. But that word has taken on a different context today to mean encumbered currency, a debt instrument, a legal tender, legally tendering it. So every time that you, you focus on that, you're living in, in an encumbered system which they can control. And eventually they're going to control so much to where, uh, where unless you're involved in some kind of special program, you won't be able to rent property. Right now, you cannot get a job that pays enough to rent property. And that's by design. It's not an accident. It's not quote unquote inflation. That's none of the nonsense. They are doing it and they're doing it with the revolving fund, which is supported by those they are driving out. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this video, please stay tuned. There will be more to come specifically on this topic uh, going over some other financial leashes that relate to other code words that we see everywhere, such as butterfly, bluebird, uh, Artemis, and, and, and others. Thank you.